it's Tuesday, and it's going to be another beautiful spring day here in the Shoe Swap. We're in beautiful British Columbia. We're in Alberta. If you're there, hey, God is good, and he's given us his word this morning, so we're going to open it together in Psalm 119. This is the third section, Gimel. The third section of Psalm 119, and I love it. It's divided up into these he Hebraic alphabetical sections. Let's pray. We come before you, Father God. We are weak, but you are strong. We are human and flawed, but you are holy and perfect. We come hungry for your truth. We come needing more of you in these days that are dark and uh but we praise you for the beautiful weather and how you counter the darkness in the world with even the beauty of your creation. And now give us your presence, we pray through the Holy Spirit to change us, to give us strength in the name of Jesus, your great Son and our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 119, the third section, Gimel. I might be saying it wrong. I should ask my brother. He knows Hebrew. Might be Gimel or something cool like that, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Psalm 119, 17. Be good to your servant, that I may live and obey your word. Paul said that the kindness of God leads us to repentance. And God does give these breadcrumbs of grace in life. To lead us to himself he creates the beautiful mountains we see the lakes he even gives us good gifts in the world like delicious food and coffee and chocolate <laughs> creates the beauty in the ocean of dolphins and jellyfish and, and manta rays and the colors of the rainbow and sunsets and beautiful birds bald eagles he gives good gifts to his children music that's beautiful gives us physical strength he gives us Material blessings and what all of those blessings are are the goodness of God every good and Perfect gift comes down from the hand of God the open hand of God That's what James said in James chapter 1 and so David or the writer of this psalm whoever it is says Lord be good to me That I might live and obey your word So he's also saying that only the goodness of God is going to be what sustains me to want to live right God is pulling you in this morning with his goodness and his grace and his love. So let's continue down that road of following the good God that we serve and being good like him and asking him for his goodness to be in us, right? Verse 18 says, Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. I am only a foreigner in the land. Don't hide your commands from me. Basically, you're saying, Lord, I am uh, not a citizen of this world. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm going to need all the help I can get, so please do not hide your commands from me. Speak to me. Guide me. Reveal truth to me. Change me. I want to know you. Moses asked to see God's face because he wanted to know God. He wanted a personal relationship with God and a friendship with God. And that's what we're asking now is don't hide your commands from me. I need to know what you're thinking, Lord. So help me with that, right? Help me with that. And then verse 20, I am always overwhelmed with the desire for your regulations. I'm always overwhelmed with the need for your law, your word. I am hungry for it. I need you. We wake up often uh, with a with a dull, um, aching hunger for real food. With hunger pains for something real and sustaining and our soul wakes up every morning and uh, it asks with its ache that God would come and reveal himself to our soul to give us satisfaction in life that we can't have without him only the truth of God and life from his perspective is going to give me satisfaction I've tried everything else in this world doesn't do it hunger is something that drives people 
If you don't get God in you, you will fill that void up with something that will end up making you sick and destroy you. In 1996, um, in Quesnel, when I was a youth pastor there, the church moved from downtown to its new building on North Star Road, two doors down from McDonald's. Well, guess what happened to me? <laughs> when there was cheeseburgers available for 89 cents. Yeah, um, I ballooned. Because you'd go to work hungry, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pack a lunch, which I should have brought a healthy lunch with me. And uh, I mean, I desired food um, in the middle of the day when I was hungry, or I'd start work and drop the kids off at school. And you know, it was pretty easy to grab a, a muffin and a coffee for a buck 30. What a deal, right? And then you go back to the church and work for a while and then go visit somebody and then Next thing you know, or, or I'd go take one of the youth out for lunch. Well, where was I going to take them? I was going to take them somewhere where I could buy us lunch for, for, for seven bucks for two of us, right? So McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. And what I needed to do was to have a healthy lunch. Here's the reality. You and I are going to get hungry today. We're going to get hungry spiritually. We're going to get hungry emotionally and we have to make sure that we have God food nearby. We've got to prepare to have good God food nearby us so that we don't become hungry and fill that void with junk food that's going to make us sick. You woke up with a hunger for more of God. That's why you're here. I commend you. And, and um, praise his name. He directed us to this truth about himself. But let's remember, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And that is the thing about the commands in the Word of God, okay? Jesus is the food. He is the bread of life. So the commands in the Word of God, when we study them, don't just give us knowledge. They give us Him. And He alone satisfies our soul. So you're going to get hungry this week. Make sure you've got some God food set aside, ready to digest in music or in a podcast or in something good to read on your lunch break to fill you for the rest of the day with your caffeine and your food. Um, verse 21 says, Lord, you rebuke the arrogant. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. The arrogant are arrogant because they are living by their word and not by the word of God. It is their arrogance to go against God by wandering away and pursuing their own lusts. Their, their motto in life is it's my way or the highway. I'm in charge of me, right? So um, when we don't get our way, what do we do? We hit the road because God is king and we can't stand him being our king. Aldous Huxley said that's why he was an atheist. He wanted to live the way he wanted to live. He didn't want anybody telling him what to do. He didn't want any um, Judeo-Christian ethic telling him what to do. He wanted to live the way he wanted to live. So off he went down his own road. And when we run away from God in our arrogance, what happens is we take off my or the, or the highway. When you hit the highway, you're eventually run over by your own pride. And uh, you, you die apart from God. And God doesn't want that. He wants everybody to be saved. But it's up to you and me whether we're going to humble ourselves. And tell God, this dull ache I have is got to be filled by you. Instead of trying to fill it with our own pride and our own way and our own lust. Verse 22. The prayer says, Don't let the arrogant scorn me and insult me, Lord, for I have obeyed your laws. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. God knows your heart. He knows that you love him and that you want to know him and that you want to change and grow. The people who are against him will therefore naturally be against you. And as you grow and desire to be more like Jesus, you will find that the people that are against him are against you. It happened to Jesus it will happen to us. Even princes sat in judgment over Jesus. Um, Herod was against him. Pilate was against him. The, he, the, the religious elite was against him, were against him. 
And if they're against Jesus, they're going to be against you because you want to be like him. So you're in good company if you're attacked for doing the right thing. People won't like it when you're trying to do the right thing. The devil doesn't like it when people are on point. He knows that you're not perfect, but he doesn't like it when your heart is toward God. Jesus knows your heart. And he knows when you're after him. And so um, when the resistance comes, pray the prayer, Lord, protect me from the arrogant. Don't let them scorn and insult me. I will meditate on your degrees, decrees. So keep God's word at hand so that you can have that hope when you're attacked. Remember, uh, your shield of faith, the sword of the Lord. That's how we fight. Verse 23, 4 says this, Your laws please me, Lord. They give me wise advice. So this is wise advice for us today to stay humble, to have God ready, Jesus ready to be our food during the day, our sustenance and our strength. So let's pray. Lord God, we need your wise advice to navigate these harsh days. Father, you know the state of the world. You know that down in the States today, there's going to be a verdict for this uh, Derek Chauvin trial in the George Floyd case. And you know the precarious nature of how violence and destruction waits in the wake of that verdict. And we pray, Lord, you protect the innocent. And we pray, Lord, for your peace. Father God, we've... Uh, heard how the variant is spreading and how the government is asking us to to stay where we are and Lord it's been a long road and people are restless and aching for norm normalcy and 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 fellowship with each other we praise you that we can have church outside right now but Lord for for us who are your lights in the world give us the right words give us the wisdom to interact with people who are frustrated father um we pray for your patience and your grace. Father, would you come send your spirit to us that we might have more of Jesus who is the bread of life to satisfy our souls. May we know you more. Give us wisdom. We do pray we would not grow arrogant, Lord. Keep us humble so we can be saved by your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what God does with broken people? With people that know they don't have it all together? He makes a way for them, and he shows us that he can make broken people beautiful. This is a great song by Ellie Holcomb, covered by Rachel, and uh, let it bring you hope. I know that I don't bring a lot to the table, just little pieces of a broken heart. There's days I wonder if you'll still be faithful Hold me together when I fall apart Would you remind me now of who you are? That your love will never change That there's healing in your name And you can take broken things And make them beautiful You took my shame and you walked out of the grave So your love takes broken things And makes them Oh, oh, it makes them beautiful Oh, oh you make them beautiful oh. I'm better off when I begin to remember How you have met me in my deepest pain So give me glimpses now of how you have covered All of my heart it go with all your grace Remind me now that you Set.
took more shame and you walked out of the grave so you're 